If someone and has never been to the coast and never seen the ocean, they cannot have a conversation with them about the ocean. They can't imagine it. People will say, well, I'm not a car person. You may not identify as a car enthusiast, but every one of us is a car person, has a car story. Everyone, whether you're from the Midwest, the coast, South America, Italy, Germany, France, it doesn't matter, you can have a conversation about a car. Because somewhere in their past, there's a photograph of them with a car. It's very unlikely that there's a photograph of them with their refrigerator, them with their laptop, even them standing in front of their house. Cars have a way of imprinting themselves on us, and that brings everybody together and is a unifying factor, and it's quite amazing. Calling all cars, attention all cars. Calling all cars. Take the wheel and drive. Just freezing along with the breeze. It's the most wonderful feeling in the world. I never mind the bumps or the ruts along the highway of life. Our objective here is to be another great choice. If you're a classic car owner, where to take, where to show, where to spend time with your car. We expect 40,000, 50,000 people and the purpose is preserving automotive history in a town that really started it. You feel when you drive down Bellevue Avenue, in a very real sense, it's the realization of a dream. Uh, my name's Jay Leno. I'm, I'm not sure what my title is. Uh, I don't know. Am I, I'm not sure what is my title. I don't remember. I think you're, it's a chairman. On the, uh, uh, on one yeah, of the chairman. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm chairman. Yeah, the chairman. I'm in a chair. I'm a man. I'm the chairman. Okay, stop. So by now, you know this whole thing has to do with cars. Or at least I hope you got that point. You saw the flashy cars, the pretty music, the mansions. While we're at it, you're probably asking, what is Jay Leno doing here? And what is he the chairman of? Well, to answer those questions, we need to take you back to the origin of the story. And it all starts in the northeast part of the United States, with a man who simply had a dream. My name's Nick Schorsch. I have had a fascination with automobiles since I was a very young child. Early recollections are muscle cars, Corvettes, Firebirds, Cudas. My father told me stories about the cars in the old days, and my brothers and I all started to get keenly interested in cars. It doesn't matter whether it's a Model T or whether it's a Koenigsegg or whether it's a Porsche, it becomes an extension of you. And for me, it was always about cars. Nick's passion for cars carried into adulthood. After finding a whirlwind of success in the business world, he would become the co-founder of the Audrain Automobile Museum in the northeast Oceanside town of Newport, Rhode Island in 2014. Our museum is designed around roughly three to four exhibits a year, and they rotate. It allows people to come at any time of the year and see something different. And we found that to be highly successful. You know, most of the cars have been restored to like new, some even better than new, I think. The museum, we, we like to collect cars that have Newport history, and it's much easier to talk and get people interested in cars that have an interesting story. It's a lot of work to keep cars in perfect condition since we drive them. For us, it's been an evolution, and the next in the evolution was to build a concourse. When I was first asked to be a part of this event, I hesitated. Frankly, my feeling was, does the world need another Concours d'Elegance? The term Concours d'Elegance is of French origin. It means a competition of excellence. This is in reference to a distinguished event where vehicles are displayed and judged. What convinced me to become a part of this was Newport itself. 
Well, it's sort of the perfect time for an event like this because it has sort of a um, gilded age thing going. You know, back in the turn of the last century, this was where all the millionaires came to play. In the 1880s, a very unusual chapter of American history started to unfold here. A number of different industrialists were making fortunes after the Civil War. Many of them came here to build their summer cottages. And by what many of these vacation homebuyers called their cottages, many others would consider them to be rather large homes. In fact, they were beautifully large, great Gatsby-esque mansions lining the coastline of Newport. have this outrageous, lavish home, which sort of goes against the whole New England grain of things. And what this was, was an architectural competition to see who could build the largest home, and also to be able to throw the most lavish parties to entertain and influence their friends of the time. These mansions were built by the people that helped shape America into what it is today. This included some of the front runners in the Industrial Revolution. It was the type of wealth that America had never seen before and likely will never see again. On top of that, they didn't have to pay a little thing called income tax during that time. So sky was almost the limit on what you could build. The minute I think about people who have money and these amazing houses, I think of what did they do for fun? The first thing they did when they could was they bought themselves bloody big automobiles. The wealthiest families in America were some of the first people to have cars. That stage was set where people saw these horseless carriages coming up and down Bellevue Avenue. America looked to New York, looked to Newport, Rhode Island to see what the car was going to bring to our emerging culture. When you think about it, the first ever traffic violation, I believe, in America was on Bellevue Avenue. In August 1904, a fellow was arrested for driving here in Newport at the ridiculous speed of 15 miles per hour. He was sentenced to five days in jail. Automobiles in Newport are inextricably linked. One of the biggest local influences on automobiles was none other than William K. Vanderbilt II. And you want to talk about rich? This guy was the very definition. The Vanderbilts played a major role in building the American railroads and they even expanded the shipping industry. In fact, his great-grandfather, Cornelius Vanderbilt, reportedly had more money than the American treasury during the time of his death in 1877. So as you can imagine, William K. and the rest of the Vanderbilts were truly looked at as American royalty. Willie K. was everything that you'd expect a young, carefree, rich playboy to be. Certainly a total sportsman and somebody who was totally captivated by the automobile. Willie K. Vanderbilt had so much to do with the development of motor car racing in America, and in fact, some of the early races were held here from 1900 to 1904. He would race his cars up and down these roads, uh, much to the uh, ire of the local residents. A uh, bit of a hellion, as they might say. But yeah, fascinating guy. He started the Vanderbilt Cup and a number of races. Willie K., you know, I think it was just a case of, hey, you know, the cars are cool. Why don't we get a bunch of them and race? Dangerous as hell, but you see some of those early pictures. You know, having spent, made my name racing, I probably would have done it if I didn't know any better, but I think that's the appeal is it was so new, it was so outrageous. A number of different sports made their American debut here. The very first tennis tournament in America was held here. The very first golf tournament was held here. The very first polo match was held here. Of course, there's a rich history in sailing here. And so that set the backdrop for this various different sporting cultures throughout our city and throughout the state. Newport is living history, and that makes it a very, very special place for a Concorde d'Elegance. Okay, so we've learned that Newport is the equivalent of the you complete me of locations for a motorway, but that's just the first step. You need numerous staff members, location coordinators, and ways to even advertise the event. It's a whole process. Uh, I think stressful is an understatement. It's tireless. You need to have passion and intensity. Maybe 600 people it will take to put on this event. We've built a core team of about 25 people, led by Rick Shad. First colors look great. Yeah, I mean, we that. did a lot of retouching to it. To build something like as significant as what we're building, there's so many moving parts. These things don't happen overnight. If you don't have a staff that's dedicated and willing to work tireless hours, 
the event won't happen, no matter what kind of picture I paint. Rick was brought on board to supply the event with creative direction. His main focus was designing the best in show trophy. The trophy has to symbolize the Motor Week's key tenets, history, luxury, and sport. No easy feat for a static piece of art. I was introduced to Rick via email. He had come up with the concept of, of the car, we call it the Car Wave Trophy uh, for Audrain. Make some of your major sports trophies, well known for that. Rick came up, he was like a kid in a candy store. We can do this, we can do that. I want this, I want that. Now it was getting all the components, all of his drawing, and making this concept that was in a drawing come to life. It is an emotional piece because our guys are so proud. They're craftsmen, they're artesian, and every person had an interest in it. And as scheduled a week prior to the first ever Audrain Motor Week, the Best in Show trophy arrived. I'm actually nervous of beginning, beginning this. Here it is. That's it. Wow. This is a long time coming. This is like Christmas morning. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> He's been listening to me about this thing forever. Yes, I, uh, from across my desk, I heard about this for a long time. So it, it's great. The proportions are nice. The detail's amazing. The gesture of it moving at great speed is really cool. To see a three-dimensional is really, really awesome. With the final piece of the puzzle delivered, the team gathered around to share one final moment of solitude before opening day at the gathering. Resting amidst the ocean sits a mansion that stands out in beauty and size. Doris Duke, an heiress of a tobacco fortune, once lived in this house better known as Rough Point. Why does this matter? Well, because this is where our first event happens in the Audrain Motor Week. The gathering, people will be able to enjoy contemporary supercars, have entertainment, education. It really touches on all aspects of lifestyle and how cars bring all these lifestyle attributes together. I've always been a dreamer. I've always been that one person in school that was different. My name is Oliver Scholl and I'm 12 years old and yeah, I love cars. I've been waiting for a show like this forever and I've been trying to search online for this all the time and then we found this out and, and now we're here. Thank you, Mom. Oliver's passion was not lost on anyone in attendance. He was such a hit that Aston Martin invited him to help unveil their new car. Why don't you stand right over there by the back of that car and we're gonna grab you and you're gonna help me undo it. I've been loving cars all my life. I was introduced to when I was very, very young. Loving cars, trying to go to every cars and coffee I could here. And it's just awesome to be here. We've also got another special guest. We're sort of bringing on the next generation. Yep. So we're I think it's after of... my job or your job. Uh, I'm not sure. We were, we were well, you grab down at the front there. The Just an if, the, if the younger generations don't come along and share, share our enthusiasm, um, the hobby could die off, and that, that would be sad. I just love everything about them, and being surrounded by them makes me feel amazing. Come on, Oliver, get in here. Yeah, come on, Oliver. It was probably the most amazing thing ever in my life. It actually was. Lifting up the next generation of collector wasn't just an afterthought for Audrain. These young people are woven into the fabric of the Concours with an exciting new category called 30 Under 30. Well, 30 Under 30 was the uh, vision of Jay Leno. We try to find people 30 years of age and younger who have restored a car with less than $30,000. 
you know, the 30 under 30 thing is interesting because it's completely opposite of what concourse events are usually about. It's about classic cars from the period. To me, it's all the same. It's, it's like nothing I enjoy more than hearing my friends who grew up on rock and roll putting down rap. You know, it's not music. It's just, and it just sounds like your parents. Lester Lannon and his orchestra. That was music, not this Beatle thing. My name is Coleman James McGuire, 22 years old. I go to St. Michael's College in Colchester, Vermont, and this is my 1975 BMW 2002. I've loved cars ever since I was a little kid. I've always had cool Hot Wheels cars, and I've always loved looking at cars. It's just a part of me. It's really what it is. It's like something that's in your blood. My intent in life was always just to have a cool car. So when I was in high school, I went to a party one night. Around 12.30 at night, this girl said, my dad's getting rid of this 1975 BMW. How much does he want for it? Oh, he'll probably just give it to you. Oh, this car was disgusting. I mean, inside, it looked like someone had been living in it. There was pots and pans and toothbrushes and forks and rodents nests and all sorts of mold. The sunroof leaked, the rear windows leaked. I called my dad when I went to go look at it the next morning and he said, no way. And I said, come on, I want to do it, I want to do it. And he's like, no. And I was like, come on. He's like, fine, you can get it out of here and you know, bring it home, you can do it. I got myself a trailer and I went and I picked up the car. So I got this whole car completely for free. My dad was like, all right, you got to do it now. And then we put it in the garage and started working. The first 24 hours I owned the car, I started stripping out the interior because the carpets were just soaked with water. I think about two weeks into owning the car, I pulled the motor, stripped the, the whole motor down to just a block. It's pretty crazy. Uh, it didn't look like this before, so I wanted to make sure it was mechanically sound before I really did anything else to it. Pop the hood. All the internals are brand new, new fuel pump, new carburetor from Weber, new radiator, rebuilt alternator, rebuilt starter, which is down there. This whole thing is my pride and joy. If you wanna see the interior, I can show the interior too. That's where I think I kinda hit a home run. You can see the Alcantara headliner. It's like a really high-end suede. It's really nice to the touch. Tires, super, super, super grippy, but I can go around a highway turn and not let off the throttle doing like 70. And that's when you know it's just built for handling. I love the exhaust. It pops and bangs and whoa. It has a great noise to it. First gear, it sounds like someone's firing an AK. It's nuts. Like what? Hit second. What? Probably really annoying to some of the neighbors, but I love it. You're gonna see a lot of young people start doing stuff like this. It's gonna be like a, like a resto mod kind of thing, keeping it classy and then with a touch of modern here and there. I'm really, really excited to be part of such a great event. It's an honor, it's truly an honor to be in it, especially being with a bunch of other young guys. We're the young guys that gotta carry the flame, you know? Coleman's vision for his BMW is a modified restoration or resto mod. His car is an evolution of what BMW created 45 years ago. For Mac McKenzie, he had a different vision. It doesn't look, doesn't, you know, the outside's so fancy and this, so. His car is a pure restoration with the goal of preserving it for the next generation. My name is Kevin Lee McKenzie Jr. I go by Mac. I am 25 years old. I'm from Clayton, North Carolina. And this weekend, I'm showing my 1965 Chevrolet Corvair Corsa model. I have owned the car since I was 14 years old. I purchased it at a yard sale in my neighborhood. I went out to my neighbor's house just right up the road. And he told me that the car was for sale as well. And I didn't see a car. And I quickly learned that the table I thought I was looking at was a car with a cloth over it. I thought it was some kind of Volkswagen. He told me it was a Chevrolet Corvair. I remember saying, oh, a Corvette, that sounds really neat, but it looks weird. He said, no, 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 it's not a Corvette, it's a Corvair. It was all foreign. I'd never seen or heard of a Corvair before at the time. 
the trunk on the Chevrolet Corvair. It doesn't look like typical cars because as I found out, there's no motor here. Plenty of room for storage. The engine uh, on the Corvairs is actually in the back end of the car. Right back here where normally that would be trunk space. It's just reversed. Uh, back here is the engine, the spare tire. See the turbo mounted on top of the engine. My neighbor tells me he'll sell it to me for $900. Since we're friends or neighbors, uh, he'd let me pay him $100 a month for nine months. I shook his hand right there on the spot. Go back to my parents' house and they asked me if I found anything. I told them, yeah, I bought a car. My parents were kind of split between excitement and what on earth have you done? We had to drag it home because all the tires were flat. Somehow we got it in the garage. I don't know how we did it. We had no idea what we were getting into. I had to work just so I could afford to make the $100 a month payment at the time and work on the restoration cost and just pay it as I go. The restoration itself took seven years. I couldn't believe it was the same car. I have a full-time job. I'm a laboratory technician. When I'm not doing that, I'm in the Army National Guard in North Carolina. I'm also married to my wonderful wife, Samantha. At the end of the day, when all that's said and done, it comes back to the cars. He is uh, unbelievably knowledgeable. Every time we walk by something that I've never seen, he'll tell me exactly what kind of car it is and who makes it and what year it is. Elegant car, you didn't even have to have Lamborghini doors. <laughs> turn signal, see? It's got the same turn signal as the um, the Packard we saw yesterday. In 2018, we received our second junior award, but that was the second time we had received second junior award, and I was fully expecting to receive our first junior award. Everyone was smiling and, and happy and whatnot. I tried to be, but I was, I was a little disappointed. A gentleman who was there, he brought a whole car hauler. He received first junior with every single car that he brought. He told me he would give up all his cars to be able to do things like this with his dad. And that, you know, that really hit home to me and I, I had kind of missed the point, um, you know, of, of what was really so enjoyable about the car shows. Being able to do it with dad, he's been there for every single one. You know, this is, is, is a dream come true for me. I'm the first of three generations to be able to experience this with my son. It was a way for us to spend time together and uh, grow closer together and, and do something that we have common interest in. It's not as much about the car as it is the, the experience of preserving history, spending time with family, and preserving something for the next generation. I know I won't have Dad around forever. Um, but I hope to have kids and grandkids. They won't have me around forever either, but they'll maybe have the car and they'll at least have the stories, and, and I hope that that carries on. For everyone in attendance at Rough Point, the gathering event is a completely different experience from one person to the next. Nick, should we should pull we the pull cover, cover off? off? Absolutely, uh, I can't wait. For Nick, the covers are coming off multiple new cars that are being added to the Audrain Auto Museum. So, an old Bugatti or a new Bugatti? What, what would be your choice? Well, I, I'm gonna let this be like a you know crowd's choice because they have to see the newest Bugatti. These cars are all one of a kind. <laughs> and for most collectors, acquiring just one of them would be a life's pursuit. But the wonderful thing about car culture is the ability of these machines to draw enthusiasts from all walks of life. For guys like Coleman and Mac and kids like Oliver, this is an opportunity to get close to the cars they've only seen in pictures. Congratulations, buddy. Congratulations, man. You got a good job? Yes, I got it. All right, guys. You didn't know this was going to happen, did you? Yeah. Think about your first car for a second. Maybe you don't have a car. Maybe you never have. Think about someone else's car that you had a tie to. Why were you fond of it? What emotions did it bring for you? What happened in those moments with that car? Go ahead and think. You see, perhaps cars are part of something more. I was hooked on cars from day one. 
I've been going to car shows since 1966. My father had a 1941 Packard Clipper and he used to take us to car shows every weekend. This is the photos of my father's cars. Me and my dad, 41 Packard Clipper. He let me drive that car to best of show at a car show when I was 14 years old to get the best of show trophy. That's the first time I drove a car. Ford owners agree, the big new Ford brings you more for your money. More in comfort, more in performance, and more in economy. My wife, she loved Thunderbirds every time we went to a show. My wife is the one that wanted the car. Uh, we would go to car shows, and every time we walked by a Thunderbird, I'd be like, honey, what's that car? I love it. And he's like, that's a Thunderbird. One year he says, well, my uncle has one for sale. I was like, well, how come we don't own it yet? And that's when she said, buy it. So we ended up buying it. I never thought I was a car girl until I met Steve. <laughs> every night for about a year, I would spend three or four hours at it. My father would help me. Uh, he was out there just about every night with me. When we first started this car, my brother was with me. It was shaking, it wasn't run right because the carburetor wasn't tuned yet. My father went under there with a screwdriver and my brother said, look, he looks like a surgeon under there. As soon as he started turning the screws on the carburetor, the car started running beautiful. Yeah, I put the glass packs on because I like the loud noise. I like, I like to be able to hear the car when it's running. That's what they did in the 50s. They made them loud so you, you'd know that they were there. That one right there. That one is me and my dad wiring the dash. Well, he's actually showing me what he's doing. Every bulb in that car works. When you turn the lights on at night, all the words on everything light up. And that's what impressed me the most. 2014 was the first season we took it out. It was the last project me and my father did before he passed away. So it means a little bit to me. It chokes me up a little bit just to think about it. But that last year we spent together putting this car together was probably the best years I ever had with him. Without him, that car would probably still be sitting in my uncle's house. Or I'd still be working on it, because I wouldn't have been able to finish it. <sighs> yeah, my father's with me every time I drive this car. Every time I turn those headlights on, I see them dash light up, he's with me. If he knew that I was going to this car, of course, the car that we've worked on together is going to be in one, he'd be pretty impressed, I think. And I'd be happy with that. It's a brisk Saturday morning in Rhode Island, and cars begin to file in one by one at the foot of the Pell Bridge. This morning is Audrain's Concours Tour d'Elegance, a requirement for any esteemed Concours event. Despite it being quite early and unseasonably cold, everyone is excited for what's about to happen. The tour is a chance for everyone to gather together and enjoy the cars before the stress of a big show the following day. However, it wouldn't be Audrain's Concours without a fitting twist. What you might not realize is that to get to Newport, you have to cross a bridge, the Pell Bridge. The bridge is a Newport icon that at one time the Navy didn't want built. And while the bridge has been around for 50 years, it's never been completely closed for anything but construction work. But this morning, the Bridge Authority is giving Nick and his team an opportunity to start the tour from the top of the bridge. We are at the foot of the Newport Pell Bridge, one of the most beautiful bridges on the East Coast. My name is Jim Utaski, and tomorrow I'll be showing a 1964 Ferrari 250 GT Lusso. Back when I was in school, which was in the early 60s, and I happened to go to a fairly prestigious East Coast school, and some of my classmates were from Welp, 
and their cars were Jaguars, Lancias, occasional Aston Martin, and mine was a bicycle. You wanted to be equal on every basis, and you were not. So yeah, does that make you work a little harder? Do you want to be a little more competitive? Do you want to make sure that the next promotion comes your way? Yeah, that has to, I have to say yes. I love the Italian cars, and the Italian cars, especially of that era, are truly works of art. Those are handmade pieces of art. There's something special about that Italian school. Those were artisans working with their hands, making very few cars. The Lusos were made at the same time that Ferrari factory was making the 250 GTO, which is an incredibly famous car because it had won pretty much every road race, including Le Mans, that it was entered in. And Enzo Ferrari was pretty, pretty sharp about things like this. The owner had said, I've got to give something for the regular man to drive, particularly something of luxury. So what was invented was, in fact, the Ferrari 250 GT Lusso. They translate that view of life and beauty into their, what they do with their hands. So when we show you the Ferrari, I think you'll see that there's something unique. To be able to show these cars as art, and quite often these days, they are in fact in museums. In the fullness of time, we will see our original handmade cars as art, not just the paintings on the wall or the statues. early morning it's about 6 30 in the morning seven o'clock the cars are out people are happy and the weather is you look at the sunrise today is the tour for the cars that are going to be as part of the concourse so which it, is tomorrow which is tomorrow we're driving mrs duke's mother's doris duke's mother's duesenberg so and doozy with, for a duke and with our dog poppy yeah i think i should have renamed her maybe you should be doris Do instead doozy Doozy? No. <laughs> but most importantly, people are sharing stories. You see people out here today just talking about their cars and how they got them and whose it was before them and the history or why they love it because, you know, they're with their husband or their wife and it's, it's wonderful. We met in 1953, right? Yes. And we were married in 1957. So we have been married over 60 years now. My name is Rini Perlman. I'm Mark Perlman, or Dr. Marcel Perlman, and we're showing a 1966 Jaguar 3.4 S sedan. We bought it from the original owner, who was an elderly gentleman of 93, who wanted to sell it to somebody younger. And we so qualified in we that it. we are in our 80s. You know, this is not our, our first show car, and it's certainly not our first race car. This one has something very special about it that I enjoy. I couldn't drive when we were first married. I didn't have a license and I started driving. I took driving lessons and got into it and it was fun. I enjoyed it. My first run, he said, just relax. You don't have to do any, just relax. And I said, okay. And then I came back and he said, why were you driving so slowly? And I said, well, you told me to relax. So I put the radio on, right? He said, I don't mean to relax that much. It was a whole new world for me and I fell into it very easily. It was fun. Cars can help form relationships among people that drive them. For some car owners, the responsibility of carrying on these stories and the legacies that rest within the metal of these automobiles is something to take pride in. My name is Hanka Rosenblad, and the car I am showing is situated behind me, and it's a 1953 Allard Palm Beach. I like the lines on this car. It's simple, clean, and nice, it flows nicely. It's really in a class of its own. That car is a one of one, and what I mean by that is there were uh, a limited number of Palm Beaches of this model produced by Allard. Out of that uh, gross production, only eight were manufactured with the Ford console engine. Out of the eight, this is the only car known to have been modified by Aquaplane. And Aquaplane was a company in the UK 
that specialized in modifying Ford engines, primarily for the racing engines in speedboats. When this was being marketed by Allard, it was marketed as three-seater, and you can see how small it is. So can you imagine three people in here? I don't know where the third person would fit because you have your stick shift right up to the seat. This car is driven. The only time that we will tow it is if we're going for a major distance, a couple hundred miles. I've always driven manual, um, and I, I find it uh, more stimulating. It's kind of musical to be able to shift and use the clutch. I could fall asleep driving automatic. I need the clutch and I need the stick shift. This is a photo that was given to us by one of the former owners. And it's a picture of this exact car being driven at Laguna Seca. And as you could see, it no longer has the wires on for that uh, race and it doesn't have the Brooklyn's. It has a solid windscreen. All right, the other one is me doing a hot lap at the Jacksonville Grand Prix. I have my helmet on, I have my goggles, and I have my Snoopy scarf on. And we did a couple hot laps, which were fun. I got into cars through my father. My father worked for General Motors in New Jersey. When I was growing up, um, Dad would have me out working on the cars. Uh, he taught me how to change the plugs, uh, how to take the carburetor filter off. In some ways, I was a little bit of a surrogate son because I would work on the cars, whereas my brother really didn't have an interest in cars. And I've, I've always been attracted to cars, and I don't know why. It might be in the blood. When you look at the gorgeous vintage cars, you wonder who in the next generation will preserve these cars or love them as much as, as we do. And we're really just caretakers. We may own them, but we're caretakers of the car. What we should be doing is preserving them for the next generation with the hopes that they will love them as much as we do. I'll tell you this, I've been telling people this. It's really amazing, this moment for me, because all these cars have been entries on a spreadsheet. And to see them all come together, yeah, and yeah. to imagine the field is very exciting. Not many father and sons get to rebuild a car together. And my dad's always loved rebuilding cars, and so he kind of passed it down to me. And this is my father. This is the guy that uh, that really got me into cars. I was working beside him. <laughs> he wasn't working beside me. I mean, <laughs> I learned a lot from him, and he learned a lot from me. It was just a, a lot of fun. It's really all about the memories. You know, it's just the thing that he and I did together that I'll never forget. It's the best time we've spent together, and we've done a lot. You know what, Cohen? Thank you for the journey. Axel is my husband of 32 years. He has been a gearhead all his life, and I guess he found another one at the Yacht Club 35 years ago. We enjoy going to car shows and have been doing it now for the last 20 years, probably. I realize my role. I'm hired help behind the wheel. She says, turn right, I turn right. And she usually is right. I'm That's always right. right. Knock wood, uh, she still puts up with me, and I tend to like her every now and then. It's made doing these things easy. I've driven over this bridge so many times, but never in a parade like this. No, yeah. For me, it's probably once in a lifetime.
With the Pell Bridge in their rearview mirrors, the parade continued through downtown Newport towards Fort Adams. Everyone took time to reflect on what all of this means and why they're here. Fans lined the streets, eagerly awaiting a glimpse of some of the greatest cars ever built. The whole town of Newport was together, celebrating the automobile and the impact it's had on each of their lives. What do you ever see a parade of cars like this, Colby? Never. Never. never see this. A massive crowd awaited the tour at Cars and Coffee. The fans parted like the Red Sea to make room for the tour procession. Everyone driving in the tour was bursting with pride as the crowd cheered them along, excited for a meet and greet with the owners. Back in the mid-90s, we happened to go to the Concord that was held in New York City at Rockefeller Center. Axel said, it would really be nice if, if we picked up a, a vintage car so we can do some rallies and, and go to shows. Two years later, we bought our first vintage car together. You know, I was just thinking back how long I've been a car nut. And I remember in Stockholm when I was 14, I and my li little sister who was 12, we would walk all around Stockholm and see, look for exotic cars. <laughs> what a cool day this is gonna be. Oh man. Hey, hey guys. Doug, Jay, nice to see nice you. How's to see it going? You. How's she running, all right? She's running pretty good. I think that there's a higher enjoyment of cars when you get to share it with people. Having fun? Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Excellent. After cars and coffee wraps, the tour will head to downtown Newport. For the first time in history, the city agreed to close the block of Bellevue Avenue in front of the Audrain Museum. Cars tend to build really great friendships. When you're in a car club, no one cares really what you do for a living. It's all about what's the car, why did you buy the car, and how much garage space do you have? The real joy was to drive down Bellevue Avenue in our cars and really feel the spectacle of what this city is about. It was pure joy. Hi, I'm Vin DeBona, and I am so pleased to be able to bring two cars from California to my home here in Newport, Rhode Island. A 56 Continental Mark II and a 57 Mercedes 300 SC Coupe with a sunroof. They only made nine with a sunroof. I first saw that car when I was a student at UCLA and James Wong Howe, the amazing cinematographer, was teaching us lighting. And he drove up in his 300 SC, but it was such an elegant car and I remembered that car from that very day. When I learned more about Mercedes and those cars, that became the car I went after. Well, you know, in the, in the era of these cars, the 300 SLs and the 300 SCs, custom luggage came with all the cars. Now, if I asked my wife to pack everything in these bags, she'd shoot me. Well, the interior of the car is miles of, of pearled wood, which is just fabulous. The wheel is very big, and there's a reason the wheel is big. It's a bear to drive. No power steering, and you have to have the torque of this wheel to make the car work. For me, style and color are the two most important things of a car. The paint job took 3,000 hours just for the paint alone. The car comes apart and goes together multiple times, maybe six or seven different times. I mean, a restoration like this is easy, five, six, seven thousand hours for a restoration on a car like this. You can go to a lot of car shows in California, and yes, they're terrific and they're wonderful, but this is the place where elegance started. And to have a car show here in Newport makes all the sense in the world. I'm drawn to stories. I remember when I first went to my first race, I had my camera and I used to just take roll after roll of film and it was all cars. And my mom said, why don't you take a few of the people? And I remember thinking, 
know, and it's the cars that I care about. As you get older, the pictures I stare at the most are the ones of the people. So what are you going to talk about? Um, the questions they give me, I guess. Along with the um, uh, color scheme, the red and the gold really was put together very, very well. Now, this is your younger brother. Are you, uh, have you learned from your brother? Or have you, are you, you do your own research, um, Fletcher? I do my own research and I learn from my brother a lot also. Yeah. yeah. Pretty fantastic experience to see uh, just all the cars there and uh, just a lot of camaraderie and fellowship with all the different car owners. This is a chance to reimagine what a car concours or motor week can be. We all wanted this event, we just didn't know it. The Audrain team has been tireless. They're working till three o'clock in the morning each night, making sure that the experience of the actual visitor is as good as it can possibly be. Participants, organizers, volunteers, and fans are all elated at the sights and sounds of the cars and the backdrop of Newport. But the biggest day of the Motor Week was upon them as everyone eagerly awaited sunrise. Sunday will represent the culmination of many, many, many years of, of effort on the part of a very large team. It will also represent, in a very real sense, the realization of a dream. Sunday morning is the crown jewel of the week. That's when, at 6.30 in the morning, the cars entered in the Concours will take the field at the Breakers Mansion. Everyone will roll their cars into their class positions, and once they are settled, judging will begin. Some of the car owners in competition are looking forward to a relaxing day. Win or lose, they are here to spend time with their car buddies. But for Mac, as an up-and-comer, this day could mean everything. Last night, I couldn't get to bed till around midnight. Then this morning, I woke up really early and, and could not get back to sleep. Just my anxiety and excitement for the day. It's definitely nerve-wracking, but in a good way. It's super, super exciting. It's gonna be a beautiful day. Absolutely. Wow. It's 7.15 in the morning and the weather's perfect. So it's a good day. It's gonna be fun. Whatever happens, it doesn't matter. It's just gonna be great. The whole ambiance of being in Newport on this weekend is just terrific. And you can feel a buzz in the town. You know, you go to a restaurant and everybody's talking about the cars. It's just, it's, um, it's breathtaking. It truly is. Do you want to start a or do you want coffee? The most important thing for me will be just to meet the people that come to see the cars because they're so passionate about vintage cars and, and they're so anxious to hear about your car. And of course, we enjoy talking about our cars. This is as good as it's gonna get. Just get the road dust off, because it's a driver. It wasn't trailered, it was driven here, so. They were basically pretty much like the same car, so though she likes some that I don't care for much, and it's, of course, the other way around, too. <laughs> what you find is that there are other women in the car collecting uh, venue, and they'll come up and we'll be chatting about our cars. I find not many women come up, but when I start talking about the cars, a lot of the men are shocked that I know as much about the car as I do. Nice view is gorgeous. It'll be a beautiful day. It's a little cold to drive this, but it was fun. Let's roll them up. 
gonna bring my father. He's always loved cars, so I can't exclude him from this. I mean, I'm not gonna go through it solo. I gotta go with go through it with you know someone that I can count on, and that's my man, my dad. Without him, I feel like I just wouldn't be into this kind of stuff. Today's concourse, 30 under 30. My son's been working on his car for three and a half years. And uh, today's a big day for him. He's really looking forward to this event. It's something I've never done. It's, a, it's a, an experience of a lifetime. I went home last night and didn't even eat dinner. I just washed my car. I tried it with a leaf blower. Went like the full nine yards on it. Really scrubbed. Hit it with like a uh, air compressor and all like the nice little spots to really make sure that there's no water on it. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm going through to get all the water spots that I missed last night out of it because I noticed this morning in the light when I was driving down the highway lights, had a little bit of spots in the hood. So I want to get those out so I can really wow the judges today because that's some really good competition next to me. Gotta make some stuff happen. come straight to me. This car show is unique because they have a class called 30 Under 30. When I was young, I would go to car shows. It's discouraging. Guys have million dollar restorations for Rolls Royces and you know Lamborghini Murras and stuff like that. But there's really nothing for young people. So we started this 30 Under 30 class. And that's what's fun because you see, it's all young people. Everybody else has got hair this color. But this whole section is all younger people. And that's the cars they're interested in. That's the this, this is the carburetor that was in when I got the car. OK. Most of these cars have a good story. Like the Corvair, the kid got him when he was 14. He's been working on it for 10 or 15 years, whatever it is. These are funny, because nothing yeah. happens that you hit about 4,000, and then you yeah. get a little Exactly, exactly. It's like you get like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like right when you hit that one spot, then you can feel the turbo yeah, kicking yeah. in. Yeah, and it's... Same thing with the guy with the BMW. How are you? How you doing? Good nice yeah. to see you again. We met the other night yeah, at the, yeah, yeah. the VIP dinner. Is this one yours? Yeah, this is Beautiful. my car. I, I did the whole thing myself. A lot of these cars are just beaters that kids found. Plus, they're cars which, to me, are just used cars. But if you're 25 years old, it's an antique. It needed a new motor. I rebuilt the motor. It needed a new floor. I put in a new floor. 74? 75. 75. Yeah. OK, close. Yeah, you're very close. Close, close. Of... We have this class and you know, get them some recognition and just have some fun with it. Look, there's no doubt that Coleman, Mac, and everyone else are having fun. But you can't deny that underneath the big smiles and polite behavior, there's a fierce competitive spirit. Because at the end of the day, one person is going to win that trophy. And because this is an inaugural concours, you can only be the first winner once. When you're walking around, there is something, it's like being in an art gallery and you go, oh my goodness, look at this. And in the 30 under 30 class, you go, God, I've always wanted one of those. And then some of the front runners definitely in class common here. Hey, I know. So what do you think? You're excited, aren't you? I'm very excited. I'm really, really excited. This is super cool. It's an honor to be here. Uh, my car right now is uh, going to be judged soon. So I'm hoping I'm doing, hoping I'm doing a really good job. But just so you know, your hand was really sweaty. Yeah, I'm not going to do I, that yeah, again. Talk about nervous. nerves on the I'm first go. Nervous. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am so nervous right now. It's not even funny. I don't know how to react right now. I'm... Just take it. Take it. Did I just on the torque show again? There's a buzz, and uh, there's a sense of it's the opening kickoff, especially when three judges are going to come around and look at your car against other cars in the class and ask you a bunch of potentially detailed questions. You really should be up to date on your piece of machinery, or you look like a poseur or somebody who's pretending to be a car collector. So uh, the BS level is quite small, and the reality of what's important about the particular car you're showing is what will make a difference, whether or not you get a first place or an also ran. Oh my god, look at the clouds. Yeah, here. You want to get it with some sort of stellar background in there? Yeah. Unbelievable. Hang it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
My name's Ed Justice Jr. and I'm a judge in the sports car class 1960 to 66. I was born into a car family. My dad and my uncles were the first sponsors in NASCAR. They were the first sponsor for a famous race car builder in Indianapolis by the name of Frank Curtis. We won Indian 1950 with Frank Curtis. I've been raised and exposed in every form of racing known to mankind. The role of being a judge is uh, not an easy one. You have to know your stuff, obviously. There's a lot of things that you look at, provenance, the history of the car, how honestly it's been restored, how it's been restored, if it's been restored. Now, did you restore this car? Uh, over the years, yes. Yeah, okay. It's an intricate process that all of us judges take very seriously. What the judges are looking for is something slightly different than you might find at traditional Concord d'Elegance events. Of course, here we're very concerned about the originality, the restoration quality, and or preservation quality of the car. But there's an added feature. This event is all about how cars connect with people emotionally and how they reflect the, the prime values of this event. History, luxury, and sport. This is number 11 of sequential restorations going back to 1990. That is a disease I have. Yeah, this is absolutely a stunning car. This car has presence. You do the restoration? We did the restoration with MPI. At the point where you want to drive it more? I drive it, though. I got, yeah. I, I've driven all my cars. OK. Uh, You're never, over the total restoration, finally? I'm over that. Yeah. And it's tuned to the nines. It's probably the perfect time to keep it for the rest of my life. That's a killer photograph. Yeah. Here's a nice picture. I love it. This is, uh, this is driving around in Monaco. That's why I'm not taking a flavor Oh, wow. Good for you. Jim, thanks so much. That's fun. You know what? You're a lucky man. <laughs> I, I hope that every time you get in that car, like everybody driving their beautiful car here, that you're thinking, this is, this is amazing. This is as good as it gets. That's true. We're showing a 1966 Jaguar 3.4S sedan. It is totally original and unrestored from the factory. This is the original car. Okay. This has never been painted. This is old English white. What I like about the car is the design of the car. It has a, a very felicitous design, there's a roundness to it that I find appealing. Can we start the engine? <laughs> it's a delightful car and it's very pretty and people seem to like it a whole bunch. It's such a gorgeous sun. Right. It is really, really lovely. Thank you so much. Oh, hey. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Thank, thank you, you for doing this. Marcel, it. thank you. Can we ask you to sit inside and start of course. her up? Sure. And I'd like to see, I'm not being funny, I'd yeah. like to see the owner inside the car. Sure. Because right. it Absolutely. gives the car perspective. Yes. Yeah, it does. Yes. Very nice. Does the radio work? Well, it's yes. Been yeah. It's got a little flat. Uh, it's a, a, very a fragile. Cover. Very right. fragile. Right. It's perfect. What goes in there? Watches. Uh, right. No, this is interesting. This is a troubleshooting light. It plugs into the engine. Right. They're a different shape. On yes. either side. Are they? Uh, no. Is it my eyes? It's just the perspective. It's I, my, would, it's I, the perspective. I, I would never criticize your eyes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I need your glasses. <laughs> now, the steel roof, does that come down? Does that slide back? Yes, it does. Yeah. 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 And it comes down and, and drops. underneath. Yeah. 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 All right. I only did nine. With only the nine with the roof. 98 cars, nine sunroof coupes. That's it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It has been a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah, so much. Pleasure. Really, Take really enjoyed you. it. Thank yep. you. Appreciate it. We'll see you later. You bet. Thank you. Take care. Glad that's over. I do. What do you oh, mean? Awesome. I'm really old. My name is Gene Jennings. How do you do? Hey, Matt McKenzie. 
Mark Shaw. And Mac McKenzie, doing, Mac? nice to meet you. I'm Jay. Not Mac McKenzie, nice, nice to meet you. Rob. Mac McKenzie. Yeah. Kevin McKenzie, I go by Mac. He's right. he's Kevin Senior. I'm Kevin Junior, so Hello, Kevin I go Senior. by Mac. Can you tell us a little bit about the car? Sure, this is a, it's a 1965 Chevrolet Corvair Corsa model. They only built the Corsa model in 1965 and 1966. I bought this car at a yard sale when I was 14. And uh, I went to my neighbor's house just right up the road and this was sitting in his garage. I went back home and told my parents, I said, they asked me if I found what I was looking for. I said, yeah, I bought a car actually. And I was 14, yeah. You bought the car at 14, but the, the really the goal was, was right. this is a multi-year restoration project. We, we knew it was going to be, uh, it was going to be a long time. It wasn't just going to be some short process, but yet it, me and dad have gone through the whole process together. It's been a great experience, uh, getting to spend time with uh, Mac and being here with all these uh, beautiful cars, the beautiful weather, and uh, to see all the excitement. It's, it's been a real, uh, real spectacular time for us. Well, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks, so much. thanks yeah. so much. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This has been an experience that I'm sure we'll never, never ever forget. Tell us a little bit about the car. So, I I built the whole car from the ground up. Okay. Uh, it was completely ready to go to the junkyard, the car graveyard, and I brought it right back to life. The motor was shot. The doors went open. There was holes in the floors like the size of my face. Like I could stick my head through. I was driving the car when there was a hole in the floor. My phone fell out. <laughs> Did a Flintstone. The whole car needed a full restoration. We got this car just on a whim, and he's restored it, and he never expected this. And this has been the pinnacle to the, the whole build. He's met tremendous people. He's learned a real lot through this project. And as a result, here he is today. Weber 32, 36 carburetor, Ireland engineering, uh, header, street and track. So it gets like the really fun noises with the pops and the bangs, but it's, yeah. not, it's not too much. So it yeah. just sounds really nice. Like it sounds classy, you know? Yeah. These, the seats have the original BMW logos still on the sides. Yeah. And then I, I wanted to keep it classy, but do some modern stuff to it. So I put in a little uh, JVC touchscreen. Yeah, yeah, and it has Apple CarPlay. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Thank you so much for bringing yeah. the car. Too. Oh, no, really thank nice you. Thank you for here. taking yeah. the time Thanks. to talk yeah, to me. You. Yeah, nice meeting you all. Thank you. That was good. And I, I felt like I told them all. I just gave it my all. I told them everything I could. It's an honor to be here, and that was that was the that was the whole thing that I've worked for. Is to talk to those people, get my car judged. I mean, I feel like they really liked it. I hope they really liked it. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Thank you, mom. I love you. Happy birthday. Oh, thanks. It's my mom's birthday today, so shout out to my mom. So we should be doing something for her right now. And she's here right now with me, supporting me, you know, helping me out. Sunday mornings is when the adrenaline gets going. You see behind us, I mean, the trophy, solid sterling silver. It's absolutely beautiful the way they've been, it's been sculpted here. Rick Shad did the original design. This is definitely a one-of-a-kind trophy, but in the end, the kind of people that enter their cars into the spirit of a competition like this, they don't need trophies to feel good about themselves. Ah, uh, yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. Oh, oh right. having been a judge, <laughs> yes, they do. Oh, and you know, they get very mad when they don't get the trophy. the fine food, the wine, the champagne, the cars, the fancy clothes. But really, in the end, you've got to remember, this is a competition. People spend years and millions of dollars getting their cars ready, or with the case of the 30 under 30, maybe their budget is a little more modest, but the passion that drives them, the same energy to get their car here, they're just as proud. So it's nerve wracking, you want to be a winner. Everybody here wants to be a winner. And it's easy to lose sight of the fact that it is a competition. The judging was pretty awesome. They took the time to listen to what you had to say. They wanted to know how if you drove the car or not, which was, which was what I wanted to tell them the most because that's that that gives them a perspective on what it looks like, how much you use it. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm sweating. My hands are sweating. I'm sweating my back. <laughs> I mean, I don't usually get like ooh, but like now it's just like oh boy. 
It was totally restored. Was it? Um, it took seven years. It's still a work in progress, really. Yeah. It's not. Well, isn't it? When do they finish being a work in progress then? Always never, going. Never We're going. a work in progress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My nerves are a little bit calmer now, but uh, still a little nervous for that, but more excited than anything. No, no nerves, just very excited. It's an unusual car. They're not used to seeing one. They're used to seeing the larger Allards, not the smaller ones. So we had a nice time talking to the people. My heart's going a million miles an hour right now. Like a million. Like I might have a heart attack. My hands are even getting more sweaty. There are cars I could see taking first place in this group, in the class and in the show. I know who's first place, all right? He's first. Whether hey. we get a ribbon or not, he's first. That's very sweet, dear. I know. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for coming here today and celebrating this amazing initial event. I'm here with my friend and uh, co-chairman, Mr. Jay Leno. And now we have some awards to give out. We do indeed. The judges have made their final decisions. They make their way around the Concord field, handing out the third, second, and first place category ribbons. Tasky. Okay. We, we have something for you. Well that done, sir. The right hand. Numero uno. Well deserved. First in class. We loved your car. The color combination, everything. That's just a gorgeous car. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for bringing the car, Jim. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful so car. Beautiful car. First? Yeah. The gray one was first in class. We just found out. My dog will went, right? The gray one took first in class, the great Mercedes. So it worked out. <laughs> Stuff happens, I'm so thrilled. My wife is, is more concerned about down. how to hold it down. <laughs> Don't worry about it, honey. Hey, how are you? Good, we have an award for you. Oh, thank you. Um, your car is really, in a way, it's 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 restoration. You're you're uh -huh. the one person here that actually did restoration. Some of them uh -huh. were preservation, some of them were custom, but we love the fact right. that you really lovingly tried to restore it. Right. Uh -huh. um, so we have third in class for you. Oh, thank you very much. You I have a cup it. and you have a ribbon for your car. That so put that awesome. on your windshield. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you so thank much. You. Thank you for letting us come out here and well done. just Thanks be a part. This has been so incredible Thanks for this whole time. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. Look forward to it next year. Yeah, cool. Thank you. All right, move on to. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Here, let me. Yeah, I know a Corvair getting anything out of Concor. What's up with that? That's not right. <laughs> Here, Dad. The Mercedes, one second, please. Wow. Good for that kid. He's a super good guy. As Coleman waited for the result, he couldn't help but notice the ribbons being handed out to his competition. Ultimately, his effort was not enough. Coleman did not place in class. Thank you very much. I, mean I appreciate that. it. It was really hard because really we had two 2000s. Right here. Oh, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah thank both. you. Really good job. I wish I could split that thing in half because yeah. your car is fantastic. Thank you. I really I appreciate that. it. I do. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Please thank come you. back thank again. You so much. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Everybody in the class, nice work. Thank you, everybody. Wow. All right. Yeah. It's really a pleasure meeting yeah. you, too. Thank it was great. You. It was great. Thank it's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hey. He has a great car. What can I say? He has a fantastic car. I mean, like, what can I say? I this is my first car, my first build, uh, right out of the box. I was at a concourse, so you know, no hard feelings. You know, I'm not, I'm not upset. Got to win like a champion. Got to lose like a champion. He has a fantastic car. He really does. 
and I just want to say thank you to the judges and everyone for uh, taking the time to come look at what I built and for having me here at the Concours. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. Yep. <sighs> Yep. Super cool. That sucks. Super cool, though. Super cool. I'm proud. You know, it's been a lot of fun. Just worked really hard at it. Started off as just a tinkering with a car, and it turned into something, something else. It took us on a ride we couldn't imagine. Super cool, though. Huh? Super Quite cool. Extreme. Don't look like you know you just. No, I know. I'm. Hey, I'm. I'm. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. What do you say? It was a really tough decision. Yeah, I wish they could split it right down the middle, and that's it. Feels great. I said to Axel, "Can I pour my champagne in it and drink out of it?" This is really a surprise. wonderful week here. We didn't win, but it's okay. We had a good time. We had a good time. It's all good. It's all good. That is so neat. So what did we get? Third in our class. Very nice. Wow, that's incredible. I don't have the words to say how uh, glad I've been to have been invited to this. I still remember standing in the car with my feet through the floors before the floors were put in. But if I could go back to that, I, I would be blown away because working with my father for the last time before he passed away, I had never traded that for the world. And I thought I could ever sell the car just because of that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, what we've all been waiting for. Oh, here it comes, you hear it. Oh, the inaugural winner of Best of Show in the Audrey yes. Concours d'Elegance is this amazing Azusa Braschini, owned by Joseph and Margie Cassini. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, beautiful. Very nice job. Nice job, yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. To be selected as best in show for our 1927 Isota Freschini is certainly an honor and uh, a humbling experience. As the weekend comes to an end, we're reminded of what this is truly all about. To some, these events are about a trophy. To others, time to bond with a child, family member, or your car buddy. But for all, it was a dream. Cars aren't just about the elegant sheet metal, metallic paint, and horsepower. It's about how they bring us together the memories we'll make with the people that we care about the most. You may not identify as a car enthusiast, but every one of us is a car person has a car story. Somewhere, there's a photograph of them with a car. This is not just about cars. This is not just about bringing people into Newport. This is about memories. Cars have meaning to them. They have a connection. And whether it was their grandfather's car he always polished on weekends, 
driving with their parents to the beach or driving to grandma's house. There's always a picture of them with a car. There's always a memory of them with a car. And that's what we're trying to spark and grow. Cars have an emotional appeal to people. And that's sort of the thing, anything that bonds people together by working with their son or daughter and teaching them how to use tools and just having a conversation while you're working on a car. It's just a, a bonding process, you know? And uh, I think it's important. So think about this. What is your fondest memory with a car? What memory comes to mind? What family member do you think of? Just think about all that for a second. <laughs> you see, maybe you really are a car person after all. most important things for me is that my wife and I go on long drives. It's a great day to spend out riding together and talking. You can spend time together. You can enjoy the scenery. You can see things you haven't seen in years. My personal favorite that I love to drive is an old Porsche. It's 1980. It just reminds me of when my wife and I were dating and when we first got married. And, you know, I love to drive it. It's filled with memories. So sometimes it's just that. It's the car that makes you feel good. It's not the fastest, it's not the most expensive. It doesn't have the best air conditioning. The seats are okay, the cocoa mats kind of smell, and, uh, um, but it's a great car, and I love driving. And everybody sees me driving it and they say, why do you drive that? And the answer is I love it. So I guess that's my favorite car. <laughs>